Hey guys, this is Chris, and today we're going to go over the new uh, tuning tool for the PID tuning tool for the Hubson H123D Jet. Uh, this tool is provided by Hubson, and um, we're not going to go too in depth into it as far as we're not going to go over all the different settings and all that. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to an article that I found. Um, I found several articles uh, that explain the settings, the meanings, definitions, good comparisons. Um, it's, just, it's a pretty good article to really uh, give you a good idea as to what you're doing when you are tuning your flight control. And uh, for me to try to teach you while I'm still learning myself, I've spent hours and hours on tuning mine and trying different things and going out and flying and coming back and playing with different settings further and further. So I'm getting it better and better. Uh, sometimes I go over the edge and then I have to go back. And that's where I want to let you know that when you adjust one thing, you can dial it in and get it just perfect to where you like it. But then when you go to adjust another, it can play it can counteract and play an effect on what you already had set perfect. So my best advice to you is read, read the article. I'm going to attach it to the bottom of the video. And my second advice would be take small baby steps. Um, make very minor adjustments at a time. And the advice I was given was fly it. Make sure you can visually see or physically feel that it is improving. Uh, you hit that ledge where it starts to decline, then you want to stop there or go back one. Um, and then when you go to adjust something else or tweak it, whatever you want to call it, you want to watch and see how that's performing but you also want to make sure it doesn't counteract to what you've already set up and have perfect uh, you can set one thing it, it can affect something else that you've already tuned the way you like it um, so this is tricky and again it's nothing that i can really teach you um, I, I think this article that i'm going to attach will will be very helpful um, so far any videos I've looked for or anything like that don't compare to all the articles that I've found and I've read but I'm just going to supply this one article and um, I think it'll be helpful for <clears throat> definitely for newbies and um, also those those who are already familiar with uh, race drones um, it's always good to to read and uh, learn more so I, I think there's something everybody can pick up from this article so right now we're just going to go to the computer screen and we're going to install the tool and uh, they've provided some documentation and uh, I'll just show you that file basically and I don't know how in depth I'll go into that just kind of keep it brief and short so let's go to the screen now and uh, we'll install the tool Okay, so here we are, and if you recall from my firmware video, I've already indicated that my files might look different from what you've seen on the Hubson website. Uh, I just finally finished everything with the change log and everything and have sent it all to Hubson. Um, so hopefully they'll use this format and put it on their website because it is a lot more user friendly. It does have a change log, which they currently do not have, and uh, things are separated. Every, the way everything is right now, everything is all piled into one folder and they've mixed the PID tool with the firmware and the firmware tool and all that, along with videos, tutorials and manuals. So I've got it all broken down and segregated. So here's the file. Open that up. And as you can see, there's the change log, there's your firmware file, and then here's the PID tuning tool. So let's open that up. And you have the manual and you also have the setup exe. So for this one, this is the install application. We're gonna double click that or you can right click it and run as administrator. Double click and it's installing. Uh, just advise that your 
um, antivirus could stop, won't try to stop you from installing this. You can ignore it and install anyhow. So we're going to install. And hopefully it doesn't take its sweet time. Yes, but um, there we go. So click yes and it installs. Click finish. The first thing you want to do when you're getting ready to uh, connect to the computer and all that is <clears throat> you want to turn on the quad but you want to have the transmitter turned on because then we're just going to have that annoying beeping. I've I've got this in acro mode now. So put that I've got that put into acro mode turning the controller on. Okay. Now I'm going to hook up the battery on the quad. And of course, you want to be bound to your transmitter, which we are. So now we're going to plug the USB, which is also plugged into my computer. We're going to plug it into the side of the quad here. And I think I have it upside down. I think we were just having a talk about something like this in the group where you should mark one side of your cable. Okay. So now we're connected, power's on, and we're going to go back to the computer now. So now we've got the tool open. We're going to click connect. Connection is successful. It should say that down in the bottom left hand corner. So after you click connect, you're going to go click request. So here we have all the current settings, the default settings for version 2.1.1. So I'm not going to go through here and change. Now this is the default settings for this firmware. This is not my, uh, my preferences that I've already played with and changed. Um, but these three down here, just ignore, they're blank. You don't use those. And uh, once you've gone and changed it, you can click Submit. And you can also save these. And then that way, say, if you're flying, if you have a nice uh, acro arena, indoor arena where you can go and fly, or whatever you want to call it, a racetrack, whatever, uh, race course, uh, if you have a preference, a flight file preference for that, you can have it saved and you can load it for that. And then if you use something different when you're flying outdoors in a more wide open area with less obstacles and you have a flight control uh, file saved for that type of flying, you can load that. So that's the one good thing that's really good here is you don't have to constantly go back and forth changing everything. You can save these, you can load them, and you can do different different uh, uh, flight behaviors depending on where you're flying, how you're flying, what your preferences are for where you're flying. So that's it. It's pretty simple. Um, pretty simple to look at, but it's not pretty simple to make all these adjustments. So I will, I will attach the article and um, the documentation that Hubson provided, it does give you some, some pretty good information. Um, but that along with the article, you'll, you should have everything you need to get started. And again, just don't expect yourself to, to nail this because it isn't easy. And um, it will take some time to really dial it in the way you want. But the, I, I, I would say if I had only one thing to really uh, recommend, it would be take baby steps. Just adjust the, the settings very minorly and one at a time. Don't go adjust this, this, this. Don't, you know, don't do a whole bunch of different things because then you're not going to know what you did 
if you need to correct one of them. So you, that's why it takes so long. You have to kind of mess with things one at a time um, until you become very well versed in the language of this tool and you know exactly where you want to go, uh, which I don't know that I would ever be able to memorize how exactly I want it and how if I lost everything, if I wanted to quickly tune it, I don't think I could do that. So um, I also recommend maybe taking screenshots in case you lose your loaded files and uh, that way you have screenshots of some of your preferred settings. So I'm going to uh, move this aside and let's go into the tuning manual. So here we have the uh, FC tuning manual and it's a DIY PID <laughs> tuning program user manual is what they're calling it and basically it just tells you how to download it understanding PID parameters and um, it's probably really good to read this and go through it and try to understand it as best as you can and then read the article that I'm providing. And I, I really think that'll be helpful and useful for you. So basically all I'm doing here today is just showing you the new tool and uh, hopefully providing you with a good article that's really going to be useful for you. Um, in the end, I just want to be able to help. And um, like I've said, I'm still new to this. I'm still learning. I'm still trying out different settings. And uh, I found that article very helpful, so hopefully it will be helpful to you as well. So just running through, it's just, you know, explaining everything. This is a good section. Uh, other PID explanations are calling this for your support level, balance, acro. And shows you how to use it. You're going to connect the battery, do everything I did, connect the battery, hook up the USB cable, um, run the program. And it's going to tell you, select, make sure you select your quad, which it automatically does that. Then click connect. Then click request. And then submit when you've made your changes and so forth. So go through the manual that they provide, and um, after you have successfully sat and read that and feel like you fairly understand what's going on there, then click on the link to the article that I'm going to uh, put into the uh, bottom of this video and read up on that article. I think you'll find it very useful, but um, wasn't a lot really to show here. I just wanted to give you a look at the new tuning tool. Uh, as far as I know, it only works with this version right now, 2.1.1. Um, the original version of 2.0.9 that your quad came with, and then all the test versions uh, after that. Well, the test versions, it did work. Uh, but the test versions, we had three test versions that failed instantly for minor little things that Hubson fixed right away until we got to this level of 2.1.1. Um, but uh, as far as I know, this tool is only good for this version, not for the original version that your quad came with. Um, of course, you're going to be curious, as am I, and you're going to try it. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to connect with 2.0.9 and compare the numbers with 2.1.1 to see what differences Hubson has done uh, between one and the other. So that's one thing I'm going to do, and I'm sure many of you will do. And as far as anything else goes in here, there really isn't anything else. So that's it. Um, once you have, uh, when you go to do this, I want to point out because I did mention it. Why do I keep clicking that? In the manual, tuning manual, the instructions that tell you what to do as far as uh, starting the process where you plug in your battery and uh, here you go. Connect the battery, then use the USB cable to connect the aircraft to the computer. 
and then open your PID programming tool, click on connect, the icon in the, left, in the lower left hand corner, connect success message will appear. So it doesn't say anything in there about turning on your controller. Um, so with that, let's try real quick, just, well, we don't need to try. I'm just gonna do it real quick without having the controller on. And uh, this is where I think they need to make sure they tell you to turn your controller on. And uh, let's minimize that, bring up the tool. Got it open in two places. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the quad and we're gonna restart that process. Okay, so let's unhook this, unplug it. Okay, turn off the transmitter. So the instructions do not say have your transmitter on. So we're just going to move that aside. Let's plug in the quad. So you have the loud beeping. So let's try plugging in the cable. Still have the loud beeping. So naturally you need to have the transmitter turned on in order to do this. Who wants to sit there and tune this with the transmitter turned off? Not only that, when I tune it, uh, I don't know, I put, the, I put that in acro mode. I don't know if that matters, but in, I set the transmitter for acro mode and um, check it that way. So. Uh, the one time I did it, I put it into acro mode. I actually started the quad, turned the quad off. Then I went through and, you know, put the cable in. So I don't know if any of that matters. I don't, I, I don't think it does. But doing things like this or upgrading firmware or whatever, you, you develop your own little quirks. And that's just one of mine. That's just how I do it. So this is the new tuning tool. Uh, not much to really learn from me in this. Uh, most of all, I hope you just gain some knowledge out of um, the article that I'm going to provide. So uh, enjoy the article and uh, if you get any good tuning tips or anything you want to share, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you really master this thing and have some good uh, screenshot settings of the way you have yours, set up and programmed. Um, I don't know, share those and maybe some people can try those out and just see where they may be going really wrong compared to how well you dialed yours in. So that's it. It's a real simple one. And um, I really look forward to hearing other people's experiences. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and happy flying.